For a brief moment, the Jaguar XJ220 was the fastest car in the world. It was timed at 217 miles an hour, and all over the world, plutocrats were preparing their platinum credit cards. But then two things happened, the recession and the McLaren F1, a car which put the 220 in the shade. Small wonder that even today, nearly 50 remain unsold. Well now, the recession is over. McLaren is to stop making the F1 and the XJ220 has been breathed on by a dragon who had chili for supper last night. Welcome to the XJ220 S. You may consider this sacrilege, but the old XJ220 was a bit of a Labrador. Yes, it was fast, but it handled and braked like a truck. Now, to create the S, the chaps at TWR Motorsport have fiddled about with the engine management system. Plus, they fitted enormous turbochargers so that it now develops a colossal 600 and 80 horsepower. Now, that was the easy bit. The hard part was taking a car that was already supposed to be as light as a souffle and reducing its weight by half a tonne. So they replaced the complex drop-down headlamp covers with pieces of perspex. The body was aluminium, is now composite. Were it not for the tyres, the 220S would just float away. And then look inside. The seats in the original model were like Wellingtons. They weighed 43 kilograms each. But in this, I've got a pair of ballet shoes. Right, that's enough waffle. Let's go. This is what it's like to have your cake, eat it, and then come back for second helpings. The last time I went in something this fast, it was made by Boeing. This is the most powerful road car in the world, a point that becomes blindingly obvious when the turbos kick in. Floor in first, the wheels spin. Floor in second, they're spinning again. 100 miles an hour, into third, they're spinning again. Now, I could hit you with the numbers, but it's probably better to just show you how fast this car goes. It's still huge, but because it weighs so much less, it feels a damn sight more agile. And the brakes actually feel like they'll stop it, rather than simply slow it down a bit. And that is the key. It's time, I'm afraid, to spread a little corduroy over the lycra of excitement that these cars produce. Don't buy a tuned car unless the other components, the brakes, the suspension and the clutch, have been uprated as well. Remember to check what the tuning has done to your insurance and your warranty. And third, don't expect a tuned engine to last anywhere near as long as an untuned one. It's all right, can I have my jeans back now then?